In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to paint Grey Knights, including their blue tinted power armour, force weapons, and various other details that you'll need to paint. Welcome to Tabletop Ready. My name's Michael, and in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to paint some Grey Knights. Any brushes and paints I use in this tutorial will be linked in the description, as well as being shown on the screen when I use them. If you enjoy my content, I would love for you to give this video a like and let me know in the comments below. It really helps get my content out to more people. And if you want to help support the channel and what I do, you can become a channel member or you can join my Patreon, which I'll also link in the description. I really do appreciate any help and support and it goes a long way to creating all the content on the channel and it also allows me to keep making improvements to the quality of the videos I make for you. And I really massively appreciate the continued support from these amazing people who've made this tutorial possible. I've built the Grey Knights and sub-assemblers to make painting easier. It allows me to get to areas that would be difficult to get to if the miniatures were fully assembled. I've also undercoated these Grey Knights with Lead Belcher, as the main colour for the armour is silver and we won't have to work hard to get our base colour down. I'm going to be covering a lot of different things in this tutorial to help you get your own Grey Knights painted and you should have no problem following along no matter what your skill level. Throughout this tutorial I'll be showing you all the techniques and steps that you'll need to get your Grey Knights painted and to make this easier I'll be splitting the tutorial up into different chapters. In this first section of the tutorial I want to show you how to get the power armour painted including how to achieve that blue tint and painting the gold detailing. The very first thing we want to do is get some of our base colours painted. It's a good idea to do this now so we don't have to worry about being messy in those more awkward areas. The first colour we're going to use is Iron Hand Steel and we always want to thin our paints first and I find an equal amount of water does the trick. As well I like to remove some of the paint from the brush on some paper towel to give us more control over how much paint is being deposited onto our miniatures whilst painting. You also want to keep your brush moving and avoid going over areas you've already painted to prevent creating any unwanted texture whilst the paint is still drying. And because we thinned our paint you'll see that it hasn't covered very well, but that's okay as we can repeat the process and paint another layer. Painting in multiple layers like this helps us achieve a nice strong colour without losing any detail on our miniatures. For me, just learning these very basic fundamentals of applying paint to our miniatures really makes a difference and helps us to achieve better results. Once you're done with painting Iron Hand Steel for our main base colour, you'll have no problem with the other base colours that we want to get painted, starting with Retributor Armour. And the details you want to paint are all these recessed glyphs and any small details like these schools around the armour. When you're done painting these details, let's use some Abaddon Black for all the armour joints. Again, we're doing this now so we don't have to worry about being messy in these awkward areas. If you have been messy, we can spend some time neatening up these base colours before moving on to the next step. When it comes to painting grey knights, one of the things you'll want to know how to paint is the blue tinted silver power armour that they're well known for. So let me show you how this is easily achieved so you can impress everyone who sees them. Let's first use some Grey Knight Steel and paint this on the armour where we want that tonal change. This is going to be around the base of the legs and other places that may be in shadow. Try not to overdo this step, it's better to be subtle. You can use reference to help you decide what areas to paint. As well as using the Grey Knight Steel to tint areas of the armour, we're going to use it to create definition as a recess shade. A recess shade is a technique where we apply paint or a shade directly into any recesses and around any detail to help bring out any features and shapes in our armour. This is a more controlled way than a wash so we don't affect any base colours we may have already painted. Take your time doing this and you'll be able to see how it started to define the shape and bring out all those details in the armour. We're now going to take this a step further and use some Draconoff Nightshade to build on top of what we've just done with the Grey Knight Steel and create more of a noticeable gradient. We're also going to do another recess shade using the Draconoff Nightshade to deepen those lines to give us even more definition. 
Hopefully you can now see how to achieve that blue tint in the armor pretty easily. But to finish the armor, we do need to do some highlighting to bring out all those details and edges. Whenever I'm highlighting, I always like to keep a brush separate so I know it's ready to go when I need it. As well, we don't really need to thin our paint as much either because we want a strong color and we're not using multiple thin layers this time. And again, I like to remove excess paint on some paper towel as this will prevent those thick blobby lines and let us control how much paint is being deposited. To highlight the armor, we're using Stormhouse Silver and the idea is to go around the miniature and paint any edges and details that we want to be more noticeable. We can make this easier by angling our brush against an edge and run it along the edge to create the highlight. For any areas you can't do this, just take your time painting thin lines where you want the highlight to be. You should see how much of a difference it's made to our power armour, making all these edges easier to see. Learning to highlight is such a powerful technique to practice and get good at. Not only does it improve the look of our miniatures, but it also improves our brush control and hand-eye coordination, making us better painters. Before we move on, let's finish the other details on the power armour that we've started. For all the gold details, let's apply some right clean flesh shade, and you only want to use enough to cover these areas and details comfortably to prevent any pooling. And once the shade is dried, let's paint all the raised detail with liberated gold. And if you're careful, you can run your brush over the detail catching only the raised areas, leaving those shaded recesses still visible. Next, let's highlight the armour joints that we painted with the bad and black. Start with some eshing grey and paint the raised ridges. And when you've done that, use Dawnstone to help define that curve where you think light will catch those edges. Now we've gotten the main features of the power armour painted, let's move on to getting the different kinds of weapons painted. Now we have the power armour painted, I want to use a section of the tutorial to show you how to paint all the other metallic details. Let's first work on all the silver that isn't considered decorative, things like weapon details and pipes. Start with lead belcher, and using a different silver base colour helps separate them out from the armour. Now apply Norn Oil to these areas to create some definition. Highlight any details and edges of the silver with Stormhouse Silver. For any weapon handles or talismans that you want to be gold, start with Retributor Armour. Apply some right clean flesh shade for the definition and we can then finish these gold details with an edge highlight using Stormhouse Silver. If you have any incinerators and you want a different tone of metal for them, start with some Balthasar Gold. Apply some Agrax Surf Shade and wait for that to dry. Layer up with Rune Lord Brass and then finish with a layer of Canoptec Alloy building up a gradient. With those metallic details painted, I want to show you how to paint the different weapons that Grey Knights can be armed with. And now I want to spend some time showing you how to paint the different weapons your Grey Knights may have. So there are a few different units you can build with this kit, and lots of different weapon options to give them as well, which I'm now going to show you how to paint. You'll find that most Grey Knights are armed with a Storm Bolter, and to paint the black case and for these start with some Abaddon Black. And to highlight this I want to show you how to do a two stage highlight which is basically the same as what I've already shown you just with an extra step. So before we do an edge highlight we're first going to use Dark Reaper to do a chunky highlight. This is going to be quite a thick line so we can still see it once the edge highlight is painted. This stage of highlight just helps to soften our edge highlight so it's not so sharp helping to feel more natural. It can also help to give a different colour tone to an area. After the chunky highlight has been painted, we can paint an edge highlight using Fenrisian Grey, which we already know how to do from highlighting the power armour. Now you know how to do a two stage highlight, there's actually a third stage of highlighting that you can do that I want to show you. To paint the red casings of the heavier ranged weapons, start with Mephiston Red. Create some definition using Norn Oil in recesses and around rivets. For our chunky highlight, let's use some Evil Sun Scarlet. 
and for our edge highlight we're going to use Troll Slayer Orange. Now for that third stage of highlight, which is called a spot highlight. Using Fire Dragon Bright, we can paint little dots on the corners and emphasise edges we think will be more pronounced because of light hitting it. It's really up to you how many stages of highlights you do on your miniatures. You can even do a mixture like we've done here. I just want to show you the possibilities. You'll see a couple of different kinds of weapon handles like swords and staff handles which can be painted with a bad and black. Next use Eshin Grey for a chunky highlight and Dawnstone's edge highlight. The other kind of handle you may see is on this thunder hammer and to paint it let's start with some corn red. We're then going to paint the raised diamond pattern with Evil Sun Scarlet. Finish the thunder hammer handle by edge highlighting all the little diamond shapes with Troll Slayer Orange. As well as the blue tinted silver power armour, the other thing that makes Grey Knights recognisable are the force weapons they use. And these come in many different forms, but they can all be painted in the same way. To paint the blades of these force weapons, I want to take you through the process of glazing. Let's first paint our blade with Sotek Green, making sure it's a nice solid colour for us to work from. Once you have your Sotek Green base colour down, we're going to mix an equal amount of Sotek Green and Temple Guard Blue to make our first glaze. To make it a glaze, we're going to thin it down more than we normally would, using two parts water to one part paint, making it more transparent, helping to give us a smoother blend. We want to use this first glaze on alternating sides of the blade, and we want to make sure we paint an even thin coat. Moving our brush in the direction of where the colour will be strongest, as pigment will deposit in the area the brush leaves the surface. Even though we use quite a thin mixture for our glaze, try not to think of this as a wash. A glaze is mainly used to tint an existing colour or to create tonal variation in a more controlled way. You can build the glaze up if you want it to be stronger. Just make sure to do this slowly and letting each layer completely dry before glazing again. So now we know about creating and using a glaze, let's use that knowledge to get the blade painted. The next colour we're going to glaze is Temple Guard Blue. And all we're doing is continuing our gradient, making it lighter. Remember to build the colour up slowly to create a smoother transition. Let's work on shifting into a darker tone for our gradients now, using a Stegodon Scale Green Glaze. And then a glaze of a bad and black to finish off these darker gradients. We can help to smooth the transitions between the colours using a glaze of the colour underneath the one we're working on. Going back to the lighter gradient now, let's work up to Baharoth Blue. Going back to Temple Guard Blue to help smooth the transition. Once you're done we can finish the blade by highlighting the edges with Blue Horror. I know that seemed like a lot of work, but it really is a really fun technique to do. And glazing is something you'll see a lot of high level miniature painters using because of how powerful it is in creating blends, tonal variation and interest across the miniature. So it really is worth practicing. You should all be feeling pretty confident at this point, so you shouldn't have any problem painting all the other details across our grey nights. In this final section, I want to show you how to paint the last few details so we can get our Grey Knights finished. I'm not going to be able to show you how to paint every detail in this tutorial, just because there's so much to cover. So anything I don't get a chance to show you, I'll cover in a shorts tutorial. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out. The first details we're going to work on getting finished are all these little books you'll see everywhere. This is the symbol of the Grey Knights. Paint the book cover first using Mephiston Red, giving this a highlight of Troll Slayer Orange. The pages are then painted with Rakar Flesh and then Yushabti Bone. To paint the red and white design on the other shoulder pad, first decide what your design is going to look like. And once you've decided, use some Corax White and Mephiston Red to block any design. Again, you can use reference or you can come up with some designs of your own. We can then create definition using corn red for the recesses around the red areas and Fenrisian grey for recesses around the white areas. 
White Scar and Troll Slayer Orange can then be used to highlight. For any scroll designs, start with Rakar Flesh. Next, use your Shabdi Bone to layer and paint the raised areas. Finish these scroll designs with an edge highlight of Screaming Skull. I now want to finish the tutorial showing you how to paint all the lenses in the helmets. I like to leave these until last because I feel the miniature comes alive once these are done. First paint some white scar in the centre of each lens. We're then going to apply some athematic blue contrast into each lens and once this is dried it's going to give us a cool glowing effect. These grey nights have been a lot of fun to paint and we've been able to use a lot of techniques and skills to get them finished, making them a great project for anyone looking to practice their painting. So with that said, let's see how they turned out. We've now finished painting our grey nights and I hope I've been able to give you the confidence and knowledge to get your own painted. There are plenty of other tutorials on the channel, including shorter tutorials which are going to help you even more with painting your grey nights. I really love making these tutorials and I hope you enjoy watching them. If you have, then please leave a like and let me know in the comments below. You can also support what I do here on Tabletop Ready by becoming a channel member or Patreon supporter. If you don't want to miss out on any future content, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.